For this week's This Is How I Invest, we have Ibrahim Sani, the executive producer and lead business editor at Astro Awani. He was also previously a presenter at BFM 89.9. Hi, Ibrahim. Hey, hi, Felicia. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great. Years, actually, since I spoke to you guys. We would like to talk to you about your investment approaches as a father. Do you think there is a big difference compared to when you were still single? Yeah, definitely. When I was single, it wasn't much to go with because I got married young. It was still separate accounts between myself and my wife. We only started to think about melding our finances together only after we graduated from university. And, and even that, it was a bit tricky because I was unemployed for one year after I graduated. But my wife got a job immediately. She's a government doctor. She still is a government doctor. But as you know, government servants don't earn that much. So uh, the first year was extremely tricky for me. But as fate would have it, I got a job and it was a very entry-level job we, at that time with Yon Bank, or uh, Yon Cap as it was known then, and then Hong Leong, and then CIMB. And then slowly, you could see the purse was getting a little bit more comfortable. At no point in time was I thinking about investing in my early days. I'm talking about mid-20s because it was just tough building a life in KL together, husband and wife. But it was only after we had our first kid, I was about 20-something then, did we think about investing heavily in education funds that we have right now in the country, as well as ASB, because those are the kind of tools that we had at our own opportunity, right? And we started to invest steadily, and more importantly, uh, we invested without fail, even though it was small increments. When we had our second kid and third kid, we continued to evolve in terms of our career, our first gets getting better, and more importantly, our ability to save and invest also grew as well in tandem with that. Previously, we were thinking about how we could have a big pot of gold and then do stuff. Clearly, that's not going to work with today's day and age, today's demand. It's always half or at least one third of what we have today must meet the requirements of our savings in the near term and then two thirds later on in life. So my eldest right now is in Form 2 or in Year 9. She's going to be going to university soon. So at least for her education bucket, it has to grow really, really fast uh, very soon. And for now, we're, you know, 60%, 70% there. I really have to start thinking about the education part for my two younger ones. It's like a project management basis. Let's solve the first kid first, then the second kid, then the third kid. Then hopefully uh, we can solve my own retirement at the end of the day. So that's the whole thinking right now where savings have to be or investments have to work towards a project management style rather than let's fund everything up, then utilize. I don't think that's going to work, at least in my circumstances. Okay, great. So do you have any specific investment vehicles when it comes to the education funds? So SSPN is a good idea, right? Looking at anywhere between 5 to 7% returns per year. That's one. Another one is, of course, the ASB of the child itself. If you are able to take up ASB, not many of us can. If we can, do it. Load up on your own. I think uh, the max is 200,000 principal, and you're going to get average about 5%. Why I keep on advocating ASB and SSPN is because it's safe uh, and it's government and secured. Now, uh, on top of that, there are some other avenues that all of us can do. I've been reading about Julian Ernst's uh, method of uh, investing and I'm, co I'm completely with him, right? When we look at how we should think about investing in aggregate, and of course, ETFs is a good way of doing it. Malay would have a different view, I suppose. Malay would understand a particular stock and bet on it. And that's great, particularly if you can come in early. Lucky for Malik, he got a little bit of uh, Intel in terms of Amazon and all the other stuff. So that's great. But for us, uh, we might be late to the market. And perhaps it might be a bit pricey for us to come in now. But there are interesting stocks that you can think of individually that you can think about investing per se. Education fund must not be seen as an education fund per se. If it is, then the only answer is SSPN, right? With PTPTN. But when you, took, you think about all the other investment opportunities and avenues, you can use that as uh, your ability to fund your kid's education as well. That's why, you know, keep it a little bit more dynamic instead of just education fund, education fund. Keep it broad, keep it an ability where if you can get at least 5% returns per year, when your child matures and needs to go to university, by then you can have enough. So I have money investments uh, in ETFs, stash away, and of course, Wahid Invest, because you're compliant, ASB for myself, the kid as well. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. Do stay tuned for more This Is How I Invest stories every Friday. Do subscribe to our newsletter or visit us at www.fi.life.learn.